with her own rank, had been content to win. Yet she, their daughter, though her time was spent in a small hamlet and of mean descent, through the great towns of Lydia gained the name and filled the neighboring countries with her fame. Forth to admire the niceness of her skill, the nymphs would quit their fountain, shade of him. Thither from green Timulus they repair, and leave the vineyards their peculiar care. Thither from fame Pactolus' golden stream, drawn by her heart, the curious Nyons came. Nor would the work when finished please so much, as well she wrought to do each graceful touch. Whether the shapeless wool in ball she wound, or with quick motion turned the spindle round, or with her pencil drew the neat design, Pallas her mistress showed in every line. This the proud maid with scornful air denies, and even the goddess at her work defies. Disowns her heavenly mistress every hour, nor asks her aid, nor deprecates her power. Let us, she cried, but to a trial come, and if she conquers, let her fix my doom. The goddess, then a beldam's form, went on, with silver hairs her hoary temples shone. Propped by a staff, she hobbles in her walk, and tottering thus, begins her old wife's walk. Young maid, attend, nor stubbornly despise the admonitions of the old and wise. For age, though scorn, a ripe experience bears. That golden fruit, unknown to gloomy years, still may remotest fame your labors cry, and mortals your superior genius own. But to the goddess yield, and humbly make a pardon for your bold presumption of sin. The goddess will forgive. At this the maid with passion fired, her gliding shovel stayed, and darting vengeance with an angry look to Callus, in disguise thus fiercely spoke. Thou doting thing, whose idle babbling tongue that too well shows the plague of living law. Hence, angry food is your sage advice, your giddy daughter, or your awkward niece. Now, no, I despise your counsel, and am still a woman ever wedded to my will. And if your skillful goddess better knows, let her accept the trial, I suppose. She does, in patient eyes, straight to God, and clothed with heavenly light, sprung from her odd disguise. The nymphs and virgins of the plain adore the awful goddess and confess her power. The maid alone stood unaffordable, yet showed a tangent blush that for a moment alone never disappeared, as purple streaks adorn the opening beauties of the rosy morn. To Phoebus rising, prevalently bright, a lies the tincture with his silver light. Yet she persists, and obstinately great, in hopes of conquest hurries on her face. The goddess now the challenge waves no more, nor kindly good advises the door. Straight to their posts appointed both repair, and fix their threaded looms to keep her care. Around the solid beam the wet is tied, while hollow canes the parted walk through which with nimble flight the shuttles play, and for the wolf prepare a ready way. The wolf and wolf unite and rest on the trees. Thus both, the mantles button to their breast, their skillful fingers fly with willing hands, and work the flesh, while they cheer the eye with glowing purple and green. Or justly intermixing shade with light, their colorings insensibly, as when a shower grants 
is pierced with sunny rain, and its mighty arts along the heaven display. From whence a thousand different colors rise, whose fine transition cheats the clearest eyes. So like the intermingled shading seems, and only differs in the last extreme. Then reds of gold both orchids display, and as each part in just the Sung and keep faith in their work as well. Hala in figures walk the heavenly powers, and Mars is hill among the Athenian towers. On lofty thrones, twice six celestial saints drove in the midst and held their warm debate. A subject weighty and well known to fame, from which this city should receive its name. Each god by proper features was expressed. Jove with majestic mane excelled the rest. His three-faced fourth mace the dewy sea god shook, and looking sternly smote the ragged rock, when from the stone leapt forth a sprightly steed. Neptune claimed the city. Herself she blazoned with a glittering spear, Crested helm that veiled her braided hair, with shield and scaly breastplate, implements of war, struck her painted, pointed lance. The teeming earth seemed to produce a new, surprising breath. Then, from the glebe, the pledge of conquest sprung. A tree, pale green, in fairest olives hung. And then, to let her giddy rival learn what just rewards. Such boldness was deserving. Four tribes at each corner had their own, designed in miniature and touched with art. Highness in one, rode a pay of grace, transformed to mountains, filled the foremost place. Who claimed the titles of the gods above and vainly used the epithets of Jove. Another show where the Pygmyan dame performed feigning Juno's venerable name, turn to an airy crane, descends from far, and the perfectly subject goes to war. In the third part, the rage of heaven's great queen displayed on the cloud and pygmy was seen.